Hello friends and welcome. Thank you so much for stopping by. I'm really glad you're here. If you're new here, my name is Becca. This channel is all about my love for spinning, knitting, crocheting, weaving, sewing, all the fiber things. I invite you to grab whatever project you have on the go and join me. Let's make some stuff. To start off this video, I want to first share what I'm wearing. This is my latest finished object. This is a simple uh, stockinette roll neck sweater, um, which is a mix and match pattern from the book 1000 Sweaters by Amanda Griffiths. And all the links um, for all the patterns and um, materials are going to be in the description box if you're interested in any of those. But this is a very simple uh, plain stockinette sweater with some simple waist shaping um, pieced so it's uh, front back two sleeves set in sleeves and then this roll neck um, I thought was a nice feature that sort of sets off this the sweater and makes it a little bit more special um, it's not as tight as a turtleneck so that's very comfortable to wear the yarn is um, ultra alpaca from Barocco which is 50% um, alpaca and 50% wool. It's very warm and now that the weather is finally turning cooler I'm so excited to be able to wear it. Being alpaca though it is very warm so it might need to get a little bit colder but I think this is definitely going to be a staple in my wardrobe. So my first finished object for today is the roll neck sweater in ultra alpaca. And I also have a work in progress to share. This is the third of my attune shawls for the summer spin and knit along of the Andrea Mowry attune shawl pattern. Um, I spun this wool this summer. This is natural black uh, Welsh mountain in this really dark brown so it almost looks black. And then a beautiful reds and yellows fiery um, hand dyed wool from Serenity Dye Works. And this is from their spaced out line of fiber dyeing. Um, so these are the two yarns that I spun this summer for the spin and knit along with my friend who is learning spinning for the first time. So really excited to be able to finally cast this on and I've made huge progress. I would say I'm close to halfway done with this attune shawl. Um, it is a pattern that was, it's a triangular shawl, um, asymmetric, designed for um, hand spun yarn. So it, it works really well. It's very, um, got a lot of texture in it. And so I think it's just as really gorgeous. And I love how these, uh, these colors are knitting up with the black and the fiery reds. So um, this won't take much longer, I don't think, to finish up. So this was the third a tune shawl that I made during this spin and knit along. The other two I made with hand spun yarn that I already had in my stash. But really cool pattern with brio stitch and fisherman's rib, which I'd never done before this summer. Um, and I really like the texture and how it's really accenting these beautiful colors and contrasts. My husband always gets gifts for me of things that I never knew that I wanted. And that was true a few months ago when he bought me a few unwashed raw fleeces. And these were different breeds of sheep. Um, and I was so excited to finally get to work with making my own yarn from fleece that I had washed and processed myself. Um, but I didn't feel very confident. And the reason for that is because I had tried washing some fleeces before. We had some fleeces that we had bought for another project, which maybe I'll tell you about another time, um, that didn't come to pass. But in part, that was because the fleeces were, I didn't have a very good um, success washing them. I tried to use uh, dish detergent, maybe shampoo. It's been a long time, but I don't think I got them very clean. I don't think my water was very hot. Um, and the wool that I had previously was not intended to be used for spinning and knitting. It was more um, breeds, coarser breeds that were mostly used for carpets and stuffing and things like that. Which is why we bought them because it was intended to be stuffing for a wool mattress. So I had tried washing fleeces before but wasn't very successful. 
And so I really was excited about these fleeces, but I didn't want to mess them up because these were actual fleeces that were meant to be used for spinning and knitting. Um, and I didn't want to felt them or mess them up in any way. So I just sort of set them aside for a while. And then I met Jess from my local yarn shop um, a few weeks ago who was selling their hand scoured and prepared fiber. And they did such an amazing job. Thank you, Jess, for all of your advice that gave me the encouragement I needed to try again. So the first fleece, as I said, my husband bought me a few of these. Um, I actually think there were three whole fleeces and some additional fiber from another fleece. They're all different breeds. And the first one I pulled out was a breed called Soay, S-O-A-Y, that I'd never worked with before. Soay sheep are an ancient breed of sheep that um, originated on the island of Soay, uh, off the coast of the UK. And they are very small, dark brown. Sometimes they have some white in. So they're mostly dark brown. And because of the color and because of the size of the fleece, the whole thing was, I think, less than a pound, maybe a pound and a half, not very big. Um, I thought this would be a good one to start with. So Jess told me that the key to a good scour is lots of nice hot water and a good scouring liquid. And they suggested Unicorn Power Scour, which I'd heard of, but I hadn't used before, um, as what they like to use. And so I bought some of the Unicorn Power Scour. It is a bit expensive, but in the bottles, you only use about a tablespoon to a gallon of water. So the bottles will last a while unless you're washing lots and lots of fleeces. The water needs to be hotter than 135 degrees Fahrenheit or about 57 degrees Celsius for the 20 minute soak. Um, the way the, the scouring process works is you mix the scouring liquid with the hot water and then you submerge the fleece in the hot water and let it soak. Don't touch it. Don't agitate it. Just let it soak for 20 minutes. Take it out. Empty out the dirty water. Put fresh water in. You might have to do it a few times um, until the water runs clean. So I have a pot that can accommodate roughly a pound of, of fiber, uh, maybe a little bit more. And the main problem that I had was that my water from my tap is only about 100 degrees Fahrenheit or about 38 degrees Celsius. And so I needed to heat that up. Um, I used a kettle on the stove to top up the hot, as hot as I could get the tap water until I got the temperature up above 135, which took a while to heat all the water. Um, and so I ended up scouring this fleece three times. I put the fleece in, in this sort of nylon mesh bag. And that way I was able to submerge the fleece in the hot water take it out of the still hot water without burning myself and without losing a bunch of the um, loose bits of fleece um, or wool um, in the water. That worked out really well. Um, the whole process to wash this fleece because I had to keep heating up the water took me several hours. I probably could have washed it even one more time to get it even cleaner. Uh, but by that time it was about dark and I was tired. And so um, I decided to just let it dry and if I needed to scour it again, I could. So after that third scour, I pulled the fleece out of the bag and I laid it out to dry on some old um, laundry baskets just outside until it got too dark and then I pulled them inside and just tucked it away inside the bathtub until the morning and then I put it back outside to dry. It was actually dry by the end of the next day, um, completely dry. and probably because it was such a small fleece. But the fleece, this, the Unicorn Power Scour is good stuff. It really worked. The fleece was very clean. It doesn't smell. Um, the smell is gone. It smells clean. Uh, it feels clean. 
and uh, it removed all of the lanolin so or a good portion of the lanolin I know some people like to keep some of the lanolin in but you can always add more oil back in um, to your wool if you need to so here it is here's the clean fleece there is still bits of stuff in it um, which I'll talk about here in a second. So now that the soy fleece was clean, we could move on to the next part, and that was picking. So picking is where you pull the fibers apart, pull the locks apart, and that lets any remaining debris or dirt fall out. So it's a really messy process, and I therefore was doing it outside. I have this amazing swing picker that I bought for this large project. Picking is something that you can absolutely do by hand. Um, it is a bit time consuming, and so if you have a large amount of wool to process, one of these pickers is really handy to have. It does make the process go quicker. It's not quite as good as, as doing it by hand, and it does tend to be a little bit harder on the fibers, so there's a potential for ripping and breaking some of the fibers with the, the picker. The pickers are basically, um, contrasting counter counterpointing uh, nails in two different boards that go back and forth across one another and um, pull the fibers apart that way. So I sent this fleece through twice through the picker and it went from very compressed to an entire laundry basket full of fleece even for this small uh, sewe sheep. So it definitely becomes much more voluminous. But one thing that I had noticed was that in my soy fleece, there are a lot of these little guard hairs that are all mixed in with the wool. And I had seen those when I pulled it out before I, before I uh, washed it. I couldn't really tell at that point how bad it was. After it was clean, it was obvious that there were a ton of guard hairs in this. Um, which I thought was going to be challenging for the spinning. And I thought, well, I'll go ahead and use the picker on it. Maybe they'll fall out. And a good chunk of them did uh, come out during the picking, um, but the others are really just distributed all the way throughout. And, but it is clean and it's not felted. Um, it did a great job of um, the power scour did a great job of cleaning it. And it smells like the soap. It doesn't smell like the, the sheep. So after it was clean and picked, I decided to do a little bit more looking into this sheep breed because I'd never really worked with this sheep breed for what people do with it, what sort of um, things I should expect from it. Was I doing something wrong? In, in how I was processing it. Um, and I learned that Soe sheep, besides being small and um, originating on this island, were a sheep breed that naturally sheds their wool once a year. I think once a year. And this process is called rooing. So um, as the seasons turn, the sheep will uh, shed their their wool leaving the guard hairs behind and um, from what I was reading you can actually when they are shedding their their wool you can actually peel it off of them sort of in a big bat which is crazy and um, in that process it's supposed to not have too many guard hairs um, in the in the wool so I don't know if what I'm experiencing with this fleece is typical and what I'm referring to guard hairs aren't really the guard hairs they're just the the um the campy campiness of the fiber um or what but the according to the seller of this fleece which again I'll link to all these in below um some of the sheep do this process of uh, shedding naturally and some of them don't and they have to be sheared. So I don't know if this is from a sheared sheep um, and so all the guard hairs are mixed in um, or not. But 
the hairs are very itchy. In fact, I had to change my shirt a couple of times as I was washing it and picking it because the hairs were just really, really itchy. So I thought, well, I've spent all this time doing this process of scouring it and picking it. I'm going to go ahead and see how it cards up, how it spins up, um, just as it is, and we'll see what happens. So I, I pulled out my hand cards and I made a roll and all of the um, hairs are mixed in here. There's little um, bits of uh, where the fiber is pulled together and I thought this is not a very nice roll. This is not going to spin very nicely. Um, let's see what else we can do. The next thing I did was to think about how other fiber animals that have a lot of these guard hairs um, you can remove all of those by hand, which is a very time consuming process, but in the case of something like cashmere is fully, uh, rewarded. So I pulled my, my clean and picked fiber out and pulled out a couple of handfuls about this big. And I went through and pulled out the guard hairs one by one under a bright light until I had nice, clean wool, dehaired wool. That process, and I did that over a paper towel, as you can see, there's a, a good chunk of guard hairs here. Um, again, a messy process. That took me, for those two handfuls, about an hour. So not a fast process at all. Um, but then I decided, okay, so now I've got this clean dehaired yarn or wool. I'm going to card this. It made a nicer roll egg and see if I can spin it. And so I spun it up a little tiny sample here on my Akka spindle just to see how is this going to work out. So I did a um, two ply um, to apply from a center ball, and I'll, I'll show you close up of this yarn as well. Um, but even through an hour of dehairing and all of that process, it's not really what I would consider nice yarn that I would want to knit with. So that's a bit disappointing. Um, but wool is used for lots of things and not just spinning not just spinning and knitting. Um, and so I think this yarn because it, or this wool, because it's so fluffy, um, and nice and clean now would make a great stuffing for pillows or something like that. So, um, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make some pillows and use this as stuffing. And I think as long as I use, um, fabric that is nice and thick, that, um, the hairs won't poke through, it will um, be a really nice application for this process. And I got to learn about a new sheep breed that I'd never, never learned about before. Um, they're very cute, by the way, the, the Soe sheep, and uh, being so small. Um, and maybe, again, if I were able to get one that was rude and not um, sheared, maybe the process would be a lot different. But from my experience, the Soe sheep in the shearing form, it's going to be more of a stuffing or maybe for rugs or something like that. Not something that you'd want to use for, um, not something that I would want to use for knitting. But still excited that I got to practice the process. The Unicorn Power Scour was fantastic, cleaned this up so nicely. Um, and I was therefore very excited to try some other things. So as I said in the beginning, my husband bought me several fleeces, not just the Soe, and the other fleeces were breeds that I was familiar with, I'd used for spinning and knitting with before. Um, one of those was Gotland, a lamb actually, so this beautiful gray lox. Very excited, it's nice and soft. Um, and so these fleeces, these other fleeces are bigger than the Soe. I was going to have to do them in chunks. So I went ahead and did a couple of samples of scouring. Um, so the first is the Gotland. And we went from 
dirty, very full of lanolin and all sorts of other things. It doesn't have a lot of vegetable matter, but it's it's quite dirty to this beautiful silvery color. And so that's going to be gorgeous, I think. The other fleece was um, Shetland Blueface Lester Cross, which turned out to be gorgeous white fluffiness with a little bit of gray in as well and some darker on the tips. But we went from this to this with um, just three washes through three times through the scour. Um, and again, it's lofty. It's not felted at all. Um, this has just been washed. Both of these have just been washed. They haven't been through um, the picking process. Um, so really, really excited to get um, on to working with these. I think these are going to be fantastic for spinning. They're going to be fantastic for knitting. I'm really, really excited to get through these whole fleeces. That's it for this video. Thank you so much for spending some of your creative time with me. I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.